Diabetes is a serious problem in the UK. 4.7 million people are diagnosed with diabetes and 90% of those have type 2 diabetes. The kind of hardship and the upset and the pain and early deaths caused by diabetes is huge. Anything that can be done to prevent that, you know, needs to be done if it can be. The diabetes prevention program costs an enormous amount of money, millions of pounds, and that is something that we need to know if it's working or not. The diabetes prevention program, the Healthier You program, is being offered to adults with heightened risk of diabetes. And this program offers lifestyle advice and suggestions for downgrading people's risk of getting diabetes in the future. In this particular part of the programme, we were looking at access to the programme. We know that there are inequalities in accessing the programme. Not everybody who's offered a, a place on the diabetes prevention programme takes that place up. And we wanted to research the reasons for that. Well, the project was a, was a great um, opportunity to understand how doctors and nurses and the people that treat pre-diabetes um, actually do the treatment. So my involvement was to go into practices and speak to the clinicians um, about how they treat patients with pre-diabetes and how and why they refer people onto the prevention programme. We wanted to understand the different ways in which people were um, offered to attend the programme and how their risk of diabetes was talked about, the language that was used. It was interesting that some practices treated everyone with pre-diabetes exactly the same regardless of age, other medical problems, um, the motivation to change. Um, and then from the rest of the project, one thing I found interesting, particularly as a clinician, was that as you get older, the chances of you um, of your pre-diabetes turning into full-blown diabetes actually gets less. And I think that's quite important to, for patients to understand that. So public involvement was absolutely vital to this research. The public involvement group helped us to shape the the research questions, the questions we were going to ask in the interviews, and they also helped us to raise awareness about the programme overall. There are various types of courses, and mine wasn't a group course. It was half digital, insofar as I was working with an app on my phone, and it was half one-to-one uh, -one with, with a nurse who telephoned me, probably giving me about 45 minutes and every month she'd give me a phone call and sort of cheer me up and then give me a bit of enthusiasm and keep me going and make sure that I was going on the right path. One of the main things we found was that the majority of patients were being invited to attend the course by letter. But these letters varied in terms of length and also the content, the information about diabetes and risk of diabetes. Some included lifestyle management advice and others were very brief. So there was really large variation. This meant there was very different responses to these letters. Some people didn't even recall receiving a letter and sometimes disregarded them. So didn't, as, as a consequence, didn't attend the course. There were also very few people who were offered a consultation where they talked about risk of diabetes. And the language used in consultations, including the term pre-diabetes, had very different meaning for people. There was a lot of uncertainty about what that meant because health professionals might convey that as a particular health condition or a risk of getting diabetes and patients were left uncertain about what the implications of that risk were. There's quite a, quite a fallout rate actually from people who commenced the course and the second surprise was that there are certain sections of the population who don't go on the course. So those were big surprises and I, I think the research highlighted those areas. I think we were surprised that many people really downplayed the their own risk of getting diabetes and also downplayed the risk of having diabetes overall, didn't understand the serious consequences that come from diabetes. People also had um, conveyed that they had a sense of um, popular images of people with diabetes as being overweight, unhealthy, eating unhealthy, behaving like having unhealthy lifestyles and they didn't really want to be associated with that kind of imagery and often this made them resist that kind of notion that they were at heightened risk of getting diabetes. It showed that different providers sometimes operate the courses slightly differently and some are more effective than others 
at putting the courses on. It also showed that there are certain segments of the population that this doesn't currently appeal to. For example, working age people and certain minorities. So I think that information can be used beneficially to get those people onto the course and to stick with it. So any recommendations that come out of these type of um, projects um, are obviously going to affect patients, they're going to affect um, clinicians as well. And I think getting the patient voice, clinical voice um, all together, I think they make anything that comes out of the project, any recommendations are much more workable um, and sensible when, you, when, you, when you, all the people that are going to be affected by it have a voice in there. So we've taken our findings back to the NHS um, and the Diabetes Prevention Programme and made a series of recommendations, including that it's important that patients are given information when they're being tested for their blood sugar and what the implications of that test might mean. We also recommend that consideration is given to the content of letters used to inform patients about their risk of diabetes and the diabetes prevention program because that may have important consequences for how people manage those risks and respond to those risks as we found and we also think it's important to give materials and training to health professionals to make sure that they are able to enable access for people who may struggle to attend the course in its current format, for example, access to a digital version of the course and also giving mechanisms to support people for whom English is not a first language, for example. We, we did discover a lot more facts about about prediabetes from this project and actually being able to share those with patients will enable you know, joint decision making to, to, be, to, to be better uh, and to have better outcomes for patients. So I think we see this piece of research as an important foundation for developing further research and ultimately to ensure that we enable better health outcomes for all members of the population. <laughs>